Alright, to finish this thing off, I went ahead and added all the attributes and expressions and stuff to get this all working so I can just run through and explain it rather than try and fumble through typing and explaining it at the same time. First, you're going to want to grab your particle and add a radial field. And once you get that created, you're going to want to make sure the attenuation is other than something other than zero. Max distance. This can be based on how far you want the characters to react to it. Um, so a larger number will mean characters farther away from it will be affected. A lower number will mean the opposite. Uh, apply per vertex is on. May use max distance is on. And was, everything else should be default. Um, some custom attributes we're going to want to add. The only difference between our creation expression now and what it was before is I added this initial u place pp attribute and I did that to store where each particle was born on the u axis of the plane so we can return them back to that value later on. Um, so instead of parent u equal random value between 0 and 1, we set it to equal init u place pp, which is the exact same thing. We just now have this variable we can use in the runtime expression. Um, Alright, so we also added an obstruction 01 custom attribute, and that equals the magnitude of our input force zero and let's go and explain that quick if you grab your radial field after you make it and hold in spacebar go down to your hypergraph and hit this button right here it'll show input and output connections and if you hover over these purple lines long enough you'll see something that says particle shape one dot input force with the index of zero so that's what we're going to be starting with now once you finish with this one the next time you add a field or any field it's going to get put in this index so if I added another radio field it would be input force index one if I added another one it would be two so on and so forth so back in our particle creation expression our runtime excuse me we have our obstruction 1, which equals the magnitude of that input force of the radial field. And you can see how much that's being affected if you turn your particles to numeric. Actually, let's do this in the attribute editor. And type in obstruction 01, or whatever you happen to call it. Now they're zero until they get close to this radial field, like this one right here. Here's the radial field, and these are being affected, and you can see they're walking around. And then they return to where they were born at, and that way we don't get like a wake, basically. If we didn't return them to where they were born, they would get out here until they weren't affected by it and stay going this way and there would just be a big gap right here this makes it a little bit more realistic okay so we added this and then we added a vector variable to separate our particle position and this way we can write expressions on individual channels x y and z so we wanted to determine if, looking at it this way, let's turn off our numeric display. That, let's see, actually, I have a car in here. Yes, I do. That they're going to walk around this thing. Let's scale it down. We don't want them to hit the car. 
That's about right. So, if they're to the left of the car and they're being affected by the radio field, we're going to want them to move farther left. Like, let's watch this dog here. Oh, he, so, he's to the left of the car, so he's going to go left. Everything around on the right side of the car is going to go around to the right. So, let's get our particle back. Alright, so, right here, this is if it's on the left. So, and we only want this to happen if it's being affected by the radio field. So, if particle shapes obstruction 1, which is the magnitude of our radial field 1, the first thing we added it to, and its position in X is less than the radial field's position X. So, if it's on the left side, we're going to want to do all this stuff. So, here it says yet to pass, which means it hasn't passed this radial field which is at the origin at the moment. You'll be able to move this wherever you want and it'll update as, as long as it's on, you know, within the surface. If you move it way over here, nothing will be on the right and, you know, we won't have to worry. But, for now. So, this means it hasn't passed this line yet right here. So, if its position is greater than Z, so this is positive Z down this way. If it's greater than the radial field's position Z, we're going to want to take whatever the U, position, U value was and subtract a value from it every frame. And then reset our goal U to equal parent U. And then if it gets past the object, so if its position is less than Z, because this is negative Z, uh, we're going to want to add a value back to it. So this is all the stuff on the left side. So when we subtract the U values, it's going to go to the left. We add them, it goes back to the right. Now, and then we'll set our U, goal U to equal parent U again. Now, if the parent U is greater than or equal to oops, the value at which it was born, right here, we're going to want to stop adding any values to it, so we'll add zero. And that way it'll get to where the position in U was born and stop moving left or right and continue moving forward. I'll make sure the, uh, no, I need that. I'll make sure the expressions I post work. So now if it's on the right side of the car, and it's being affected by the radial field, so it's a value greater than zero, and it's on the right side of the radio field. We want to do the same thing, but the opposite. So, if it hasn't passed it yet, we're going to add U values to it. So it's going to move farther to the right. And down here, if it's passed it, we're going to subtract them so it moves back to the left. And if it gets, you know, I really don't think, I don't need this at all. So I'm delete it. I guess syntax error though. Because I have one too many brackets in there. Alright. So now just to make sure that's still working, I'll let it play. And our 
dog here. Moves just around it, and then back to where he started from. So you can see that guy right here went through it. So to change that, go to our radial field, and we can change magnitude. Isn't gonna do too much. It'll make our value change from zero faster. So let's just change our max distance to something wider so they're affected sooner. Like five. So now anything within five units of that will get the input force value above zero and start turning our characters. So our dog should be coming up again. And he's already turning way up here. So now I can see they're all going around this. Great. And that's pretty much it. All this character stuff is what we had in here before. So if you wanted to add another radial field, you would select your particle, add a radial field, make sure all your settings match the previous one. So attenuation is something other than zero, it has a max distance, and it's on, so it uses it, applied for vertex needs to be on. And then, you'll have to add another custom attribute to hold that, um, that field's force. So, you know, it'd be like obstruction 2 equals magnitude of the input force 1 and then you'd have to copy all this again but make sure it was you know object 2 and then do the same thing or if it was, and if it was bigger you know you might want to add change this value or what have you so now that we got that set up we can start killing some people that are acting weird. Like if we look back here, let's, let's say these guys are too close to each other. They definitely just hit each other. So we got a lot of zombies in here. If I hit six, you can kind of see him better. So let's get rid of this guy. We don't ever want him to be born. So if we turn our First, let's go to our attribute editor and turn our particles to numeric and type in ID. We can see that his ID is 48. So, in order to kill him, let's set our lifespan to lifespan PP only. And in our creation expression, way at the bottom of everything, we can write if our ID is equal to 48, lifespan pp equals 0. Well, that guy will never be born. So we're at frame 280, and 87 and 48 are next to each other. Now when I rewind and play to 280, that zombie will not be there anymore. So we'll just wait to get there. 280 it was. Here's our 87 guy, and that zombie that was behind him is gone. And everybody else that was there is still there. So if any one of your characters is acting weird, you can just go to the bottom of your your uh, expression, in the creation expression, and just murder that guy because he sucks. Alright, 
one more thing I forgot to do is um, if we let this play through for a while, we're gonna have a lot of characters up here eventually, and you can watch our poly count grow over here. Now, once they get to the end of the surface, they just stop and keep going. What we can do, since we changed their lifespan PP um, attribute on, we can, if they ever get to one in the V direction, we can kill them. So we just can save on memory and such. So if you go to your runtime expression, way at the bottom, if it B is ever greater than or equal to 1. It's lifespan equals 0. If we edit that, make sure I typed it right. I did. So if we rewind. For our guys to get to the end, looks like this guy's gonna win. And he's gone. So, so you just have to make sure that your camera doesn't see the beginning, where they're born, or the end. So, and you still got quite a bit of area. And you can build your shot around, around this stuff too.